question where do their so the they don't have they have too low insulin to, to use any of that energy yeah where does it go do they oh, just, excellent question so i promised i would get to that okay so so we have to. So here's the maybe the summary. Then I'll talk about how yeah. to reconcile these two things. Because I'm not saying energy doesn't matter. Just like how you kind of pitched the question, and I'm knocking it out of the park here. Um, the energy has to be accounted for, but our view is so simplistic that we fail to have a, a, a the the brain option to account for it. So there must be a signal that tells the cell to store that fat, insulin, but then there must be the energy to store. Yeah. So insulin is the signal telling the fat cell it's time to store energy. Calories, or more accurately, the carbons that we call calories, those carbons then act as the fuel for that growth. That is what we start to store in the fat cell. If it's glucose, no problem. The fat will turn it into a fat. If it's straight chains of fatty acids, no problem. The fat cell will just link it up into triglycerides. So regardless, insulin will tell the fat cell to make more triglycerides and to hold on to it. So how do we then reconcile this? If we wipe out the insulin, but the calories are still high, how on earth can we put the fat cell in a state to start to shrink? Where does the energy go? Three mechanisms. If I can think through these and articulate them as I'm just imagining it off the top of my head here. I'm not imagining them. I'm just going to try to explain it in an articulate way. One would be the what, uh, the impossible. In fact, two levels. One is the fat cell. One is the body. Then the body has two levels to it. Energy and ketones at the body. Maybe, and so let's start with the fat cell. So with the fat cell, uh, the biochemistry of the fat cell is such that insulin is necessary to block the breakdown of the fat, that process called lipolysis, mm -hmm. what people often call fat burning. That's not fat burning. It's fat breakdown. Insulin stops that at even modest increases. Even a modest little bump in insulin will tell the fat cell to lock down mm -hmm. and stop breaking it down. And you see this in a blood marker called free fatty acids. Mm. If you look at free fatty acids, it's a perfect inverse with relationship with insulin. Insulin goes up, free fatty acids, which is the product of fat burning or breakdown, goes down. Insulin comes down through fasting or a ketogenic diet, free fatty acids go up. Okay, now at the whole body, any student listening who is a student of physiology, you got even some body. I remember years ago when I got um, ACSM certified as a personal trainer, we learned about the Benedict equation. The Benedict equation was named after this famous energy scientist named Francis Benedict. And he documented, he, he outlined this algorithm that could predict metabolic rate. He collaborated in the early 1900s with, with J Elliot P. Joslin, the godfather of modern endocrinology. I just say that because any students that are listening to this, these are legends. Mm -hmm. Joslin and Benedict, they came together, they put their brains together in this, this perfect merger of, of brain power to study the metabolism in what they called severe diabetes or just type 1 diabetes, untreated at the time because there was no insulin. Benedict found that in these people with severe diabetes, their overall metabolic rate was about 20% higher than it should be. Interesting phenomenon. So the body was just, the engine was idling a little higher mm -hmm. than it should. So everything was just running a little hotter, a little more metabolism, more metabolic rate for no apparent reason. You know, it's just wasting energy. Mm -hmm. in, nine, in the 1980s, I think it was 1984, a group at the University of Minnesota, not a direct follow-up of this study, but it's a good it is a good follow-up. They took people with type 1 diabetes and first of all confirmed the finding from about 70 years prior. And then they gave the type 1 diabetics insulin and minute by minute metabolic rate started to drop. Mm. So insulin, in other words, has a whole body metabolic effect at dictating the metabolic rate. Insulin is low, metabolic rate goes up. You're sort of pressing the accelerator. Insulin goes up, metabolic rate goes down. Mm. So that's one component that happens at the whole body level. But then the second component is one that no one ever captures, which is the ketones. So when insulin comes down, the, the, the overall hybrid of the human body, which is shifting between glucose and fats primarily, when insulin goes down, fats, fat burning goes up. And, and when insulin stays at a relatively low level for 12 to 16 hours, the body has begun burning more fat than it knows what to do with. That more than it knows what to do with start is, is essentially ketogenesis, mm -hmm. where you have the cells of the liver, most especially, it's burning more fat than it needs, but it can't stop burning fat because the low insulin is, is not letting it stop burning. So that turns into ketones. Now, everyone would say, okay, well, that's a ketogenic diet. 
What people don't appreciate is that every ketone has a caloric value roughly similar to glucose. Now, with that view in mind, it starts to create some uh, resolution because when we're in ketosis, you are breathing out ketones mm -hmm. and you are urinating out ketones. Think of those as calories. You are literally dumping calories from the body back out into the atmosphere. So being ketosis results in a, for lack of a better term, faster metabolism? Well, yes, that faster metabolism for the reason I mentioned a moment ago, which yeah. is when insulin is low, or metabolic you're just rate is higher. burning more because you're wasting more. You're getting rid of more. So there's two. So you're right. burning more in the in the context of the body having a higher metabolic rate, right. and it goes to about 200 calories a day higher. It's a big deal. It is a big yeah, deal. A big That's deal. 30 yeah. minutes on the freaking stair stepper yeah, for right. hell's sake. That's right. well, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just be in ketosis. Right. <laughs> but then yeah. at the same time, now you're. So that's a higher metabolic rate, but when you combine that with the wasting of the ketones in the breath and in the urine, that's another additive bump. So now you are burning more and you're wasting, and it's the wasting that no one ever talks about or even quantifies. Yeah. That can be up to a couple hundred calories a day as well. So that's why if someone's on a ketogenic diet, I've been a defender of this term, you have a little more metabolic wiggle room. And, and thus, attempting to reconcile and counting calories becomes a bit of a fool's errand because, mind you, first and foremost, you can never perfectly capture metabolic rate in a human. You can never perfectly capture how much calories they're actually consuming and what's actually getting absorbed and the thermic effect of absorbing it and digesting it. There's so many variables that go into it that my view on the fat cell and obesity is – in fact, I'll, I'll articulate it this way. The goal of someone who wants to lose weight is they want to shrink their fat cells because that's weight loss. You don't right. kill your fat cells, you just shrink them. They have two steps they can take. They can take the low calorie step or they can take the low insulin step as their first step. And they're not the same, although they start to overlap a little bit. <clears throat> my problem is the traditional caloric view of obesity is they just say, I'm going to cut my calories without addressing their high insulin. The problem with that view is if you stop energy coming in, but insulin is still a little elevated, which is pushing the energy into storage, your blood nutrients go down. Glucose will go down. Ketones will go down. And those are the main fuels for the brain. So the brain starts to go hungry. And if the brain goes hungry, the body's hungry and hunger always wins. Hmm. That's, this is why you'll never see a reunion tour of The Biggest Loser game show yeah that's right oh yeah they gain it all back now i'm not saying there's no value in looking at energy and scrutinizing it but it shouldn't be the first step my, at least my view is the first step should not be i'm just cutting my calories because you're going to get hungry and hunger always Amen. wins let the first step be i'm going to lower my insulin by carefully controlling carbs now i just mean be smart about carbs Basically, with control carbs, the simplest level to that is if it comes in a bag or a box with a barcode, yeah. just eat less of it. Whole fruits and vegetables, eat them, enjoy them. Eat them, don't drink them. I mean, depending on where you're starting, you know, if I'm talking to an yeah. overweight type 2 diabetic, eat those fruits and vegetables, don't drink them. If it comes in a bag or a box with a barcode, don't do it. So lower your insulin, which is going to not only improve your insulin sensitivity and reduce your risk of heart disease and Alzheimer's disease and infertility mm. and whatever – but it will increase your metabolic your rate metabolic, yeah. and it will start making ketones, which you're wasting from the body. Wow. And then you'll get to a lower plateau. If you need to start controlling calories at that point to get further fat loss, all right, now yeah. let's start looking you're, at the And or build muscle. This is, a, I oh, like yeah. this is such a perfect segue yeah. for, and you're the perfect person to have this conversation with. We have this ongoing 